Okay, so hi guys. Uh, I'm having a bit of trouble to set this up. As you can see, my video is uh, really not good. I'm not sure if it's because of my computer or because of the internet. Uh, so hopefully the audio will be good enough. Um, but what I think I will do is to stop my video. I just wanted to say hi to everyone. Um, and I think it should be maybe a bit better with, without the video. Okay. Right. So I have already uh, shared my screen, so you should see it, I hope. Um, okay, so I'm very happy to give this uh, talk today as an, an alumni to the MSc in Climate Conservation, uh, which celebrates its 20, uh, 20th an anniversary this year. Uh, so happy birthday. Um, and so I did the MSc in 2008. Um, so my name is uh, Camille. Camille Coudra. I'm the founder and director of Association Anulac, uh, which is based in Laos. And today I want to give you an overview of uh, the project that we, uh, we are doing in Laos. And also I will give you a bit of background about uh, myself. Okay, uh, to start with, so uh, who we are. Uh, so, Association Anulac is a French uh, association which uh, was founded in 2014 and we are dedicated to biodiversity conservation and community resilience in the Annamite Mountains of Laos. And if you are wondering, Anulac means conservation in Laos. Okay, so a little bit more about myself and how I ended up here in Laos. Uh, so if you haven't noticed yet, I'm French and I grew up in a French Caribbean. Uh, so very much in the out outdoors and from a very young age, I knew I wanted to work with, uh, with animals. When I was six, I wanted to be a vet. Um, and when I was about 15 years old, uh, I knew I wanted to work with primates. Uh, I'm not sure where it came from. Probably I was influenced by uh, stories and documentaries uh, from Jane Goodall. Um, so from here in the Caribbean, I ended up here in Montreal, Canada. Uh, a very big difference, as you can uh, see from the photo. Uh, so I went there to study a bachelor in uh, general biology and during these three years uh, of my, my degree uh, I developed a very strong interest uh, in biodiversity conservation but I was still very interested in, in primates and studying primates. Um, so after I completed my degree I decided to go back somewhere warm uh, and I did some volunteer, vol uh, volunteer work in rescue centers in South America. And during this year in South America, I, I was also looking for um, opportunities to uh, pursue my studies that could somehow combine my interest in uh, conservation and in primates. So I was very happy when I found out about this uh, MSc in Primate Conservation in Oxford. Uh, so I applied and I was uh, lucky enough to uh, be selected and so arrived in Oxford to start, start my MSc in 2008. So as part uh, of, um, of, the, of the master's program at the end, we had to complete um, a research project. And while I was uh, looking for a project and or a species uh, to focus on, um, so I was first looking in, in Asia um, because I have family living in Asia. And uh, during my research, uh, mostly online, 
I came across a photo of a red shank duke, and this is when I fell in love uh, for the species. And this is also when I decided that I would study that species for my, for my project. Uh, and so I did a bit more research on, on dukes, um, and I found out that there are actually three different species of dukes, uh, the red shank duke, the black chang duke and the gray chang duke and the three species combined um, they are endemic to uh, vietnam laos and cambodia uh, and I, what i also found out is that they are highly threatened and that there are very very few studies on on dukes on the three species of dukes so i was very determined to um, to study them and so for my, my research, I ended up in Cambodia. Uh, so I was supposed to go in a site in Eastern Cambodia to study the Black Cheng Duke. Um, but my project actually changed uh, kind of at the last minute. And I, uh, I still went to Cambodia, but in a different site with no dukes, but, I, uh, but with other species of primates and I did some uh, survey, primate surveys in this, uh, in this site. That was my first um, experience in field work and I uh, really loved it. So after completing my master's, I decided I wanted to pur pursue my, uh, my studies and my research. And I was still determined to uh, go see the Dukes in the wild. Uh, so I went to Laos this time. Uh, so I uh, decided in, in, on, on Laos um, because, so first of all, uh, I found out that it had the largest uh, remaining population of Red Shank Duke. And also uh, in general, in biodiversity, there were very few uh, research projects um, so, yeah, so I, I went there and I, um, my, my PhD research was on species distribution, abundance and conservation in one of the national parks uh, in uh, Laos uh, called Nakai Nam Tun. Um, and this is during this research that I also realized how uh, quickly some species can go locally extinct because of the threat they are under. So after I went back to the UK to complete a uh, write up my, my thesis, I, I, I just wanted to go back as soon as possible to Laos. So I've been back uh, in Laos since 2013. And my plan was to really set up a long-term project uh, to focus on research uh, on primates, but also other species. And uh, of course, conservation of uh, all these uh, species occurring in a, in a region. Um, yeah, so today I share my time um, between village life, a very simple life. I live in a uh, traditional wooden house, which is, so the village is located uh, just uh, outside the national park, uh, where most of our projects are uh, based. Uh, and then I try to spend as much time as possible in the field doing uh, uh, field work and in villages located inside the national park to uh, spend some time with local communities. Um, but of course, I also have to spend quite a bit of time uh, in the office. So our Lao team, um, so currently we, we employ 47 uh, people and they're all Lao national, <coughs> sorry, Lao national except uh, for myself. Uh, yeah, I, I I really focus on uh, trying to have a, a, a national uh, team. Okay, uh, so where do we work? Uh, we work so in Laos, which is located 
uh, in mainland uh, Southeast Asia. And most of our work is based in uh, one of the national protected areas uh, in, uh, in Laos, uh, located in the central east of, uh, of the country and in the heart of the Anamite Mountains, um, known for its very rich biodiversity and high level of endemic species. So I thought I would uh, quickly show you a slide with a, uh, all the different species of primates uh, occurring in Laos. So 18 different species, so quite important uh, country for uh, primate conservation in Laos. And as you can see on uh, this slide, most of them are um, uh, classified as globally threatened by the IUCN. So a little bit more about Nakanampton uh, National Park. It is uh, a very large uh, area, uh, about 4,000 square kilometer, uh, still highly forested with uh, an estimation of 88% forest cover. Most of it is actually primary forest. It is ranked as a priority for biodiversity conservation at the national, but also the global uh, level and it holds many globally threatened uh, species. There are also some local communities and villages living inside the national park, uh, which represent about 7,000 um, uh, people from eight different uh, ethnic groups. Uh, and each ethnic group has uh, its own language in addition to Lao language. So in 2015, uh, we set up a field station in the middle of the forest to where, where some of our first uh, research projects uh, were based. So yeah, we are really in the middle of, of the forest, which very um, beautiful and, and rugged uh, landscape and pri mostly primary forest. Just to give you an uh, overview of the different species we find in Nakanampton. So it has um, a still a large population of Asian elephants. Uh, the last um, uh, uh, estimate of the population dates back 10 years ago. So it's not updated, but it was about 150 individuals. And this is really something I want to work on, actually, to uh, estimate the population today. Um, the Anamite Mountain is uh, an area that has been very little explored. And this is uh, consequently um, a region where some of the last uh, large mammal discoveries took place. And this include the Saola, which was only discovered in 1992 in Vietnam and then in Laos. And Nakanampton has uh, still a few individuals left. We don't know how many, but uh, there, it is estimated that actually the global population left in the world of uh, the Saola is fewer than uh, 100 individuals. And actually, there is a, a team of uh, experts uh, who are working really hard on trying to save the Saola from a global extinction with a starting a breeding program for uh, reintroduction in the wild. Uh, we still have a large population of uh, Austin civets. So this is a... a a species of small carnivore, which is endemic to the Anamite Mountains. Another large mammal that was discovered uh, only in 1994 um, in Vietnam and also in Laos, which is also an endemic to the Anamite Mountains, is the large antler munchak. Um, and we have one of the largest um, population in, in the world uh, in, in Nakanampton. 
another endemic species that was also discovered quite uh, late uh, in time to the scientific community is the anamite striped rabbit, so endemic to the anamite, which and it was uh, um, uh, discovered to science in uh, the year 2000. We still have um, uh, good populations of pangolins, uh, so two different species, the Sunda pangolin and the Chinese pangolin. Um, as you may know, this is the most trafficked uh, mammal in the world. Uh, so they are really not doing well across the world. So it's, it's quite good news that we still have some uh, in Nakanantan and this is one of our uh, target and indicator species as well. Uh, so we have nine different species of primates and as you can see from this slide, most of them are uh, globally threatened, including two uh, species that are critically endangered, the red shank duke and the southern uh, white chick gibbon. So just to give you a little bit of context uh, about Nakanantan National Park, so it was uh, designated as a national protected area in 2000, in, sorry, in 1993. Uh, and since last year, it, its uh, status changed to national park. In terms of the management, uh, it's been under the management of, of a government institution uh, since 2005. Uh, uh, this, this institution was created uh, specific, specifically for the, the management of, uh, of the national park after the construction of a very large hydroelectric dam. Uh, so that was to offset the environmental and social impact of the dam. So this is one of the most uh, funded national park uh, in, the, in the region. Uh, but uh, this management authority uh, has poorly perform performed in terms of management, which has resulted in the decision from the government and um, international stakeholders to completely reform um, the, 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 the management authority. And as part of this reform, so the reform has been ongoing since uh, 2014. So it's still ongoing. Um, yeah, so you can tell that uh, you have to be very, very patient when you work in Laos. And as part of this reform, uh, the government, uh, so the, the, the management authority has contracted a consortium of technical experts to provide uh, uh, assistance uh, to the management uh, of the national park. And this includes uh, Association ANULAC. And as part of this consortium, I'm uh, advising the management authority um, in, uh, in the biodiversity research component. So in terms of the threats and challenges uh, in, uh, in Nakanamton, so the main threat is really the hunting pressure. Uh, the wildlife is highly um, um, hunted uh, and very intensively in, uh, in the national park. This is for the local consumption, for recreational hunting, but mainly uh, the, the, the hunting that has the most impact is uh, for the national and the international trade. So there are poachers from uh, outside the national park uh, that are Lao and Vietnamese uh, uh, nationals. But uh, as I mentioned before, there are also some local communities that are still highly reliant on natural resources. Uh, because it is a very large uh, area, area um, it requires intensive and constant law enforcement. And, and uh, as I just mentioned, there's been also like, uh, quite a poor management history, which has uh, failed to protect biodiversity. And we have already observed some local uh, regional uh, extinction 
of some uh, key species uh, such as uh, tigers. Okay, so now I want to give you an overview of uh, the different project we are working on and we've been uh, we've been developing and working on since the the beginning so we have uh, five main different programs um, uh, so it's biodiversity research uh, conservation awareness anti-poaching patrols uh, community sustainable livelihoods and capacity building so in terms of uh, biodiversity research, we work on different species, including and, and species groups, and including primates, otters, and also we do some general uh, wildlife monitoring uh, programs. So um, our project actually started with, uh, with primate uh, research. Uh, mainly on dukes and gibbons, uh, but actually uh, our, I uh, decided last year to stop the project on dukes uh, because the, the idea at the beginning was to set up a long-term um, project on the behavioral ecology of dukes uh, because there is still very little we know of the species, uh, but this uh, this requires habituation of at least some groups. And after many years of uh, putting a lot of resources in this project, we realized that uh, we were not successful of habituating uh, dukes. So it was not really worth the effort of uh, funding and human resources to put into this project. So yeah, I decided to stop this project for now. And I'm exploring some, maybe some alternative um, uh, ways to still study their, their ecology. So for gibbons, we, I, I also wanted to uh, study their behavioral ecology, but it was even more difficult uh, to habituate gibbons. So, um, so we didn't pursue this, uh, this project, but we are still uh, working on gibbons on two uh, main uh, projects. Uh, species distribution and survey methods. Um, so, for for uh, for the species distribution, so there are two different species of white cheek gibbons: uh, the northern white cheek gibbon and the southern uh, white cheek gibbon. But we are still not sure about the distribution range limit. And currently, it is believed that the Nampton uh, River, which crosses the Nakanampton uh, National Park where we work, uh, would be the, the, um, the limit between the two species. And this means that we could have both uh, the northern and the southern uh, white sheep gibbon in, um, in Nakanampton. Uh, but this hasn't been confirmed. And because gibbon calls are uh, species specific, we've been recording some gibbon calls across uh, Nakanampton um, to identify the different species or uh, if there are more than one species. And this project is uh, implemented in collaboration with uh, the Czech University of Life Science in Prague and they are supporting us in all the, the analysis components of the, the given recordings. And this is still an ongoing project. Uh, we are still recording uh, some given calls in uh, more sites across the national park. So in terms of the project um, survey methods, uh, so, as you may know, gibbons are some of the most threatened primate, uh, uh, some of the most, prim most threatened primate family uh, in the world. The 20 different species of gibbons are classified now as globally threatened. But there are still many uh, gaps in our knowledge in their distribution and the population uh, status of gibbons in sites uh, where they occur. 
Um, and in order for uh, conservationists to uh, develop some site-based conservation management strategies of indicator species such as gibbons, we need to use reliable methods to monitor our population. And currently there is actually not really reliable methods to survey uh, gibbons. So last year we started this collaboration um, with a team from the University of St. Andrews, including statisticians and engineers to develop uh, a new method to survey gibbons that, would, that will include the hardware and the software. Uh, and uh, we hope that we will have a first prototype um, uh, sometime uh, next year. And the prototype will be first, for the first time, tested at our site in Laos. And this project is uh, also endorsed and is as part of an IUCN uh, Gibbon Survey Guidelines that is coordinated by the uh, Section on Small Ape of the IUCN SSC. Okay, so we've also been working on uh, authors. Um, so again, uh, for Asian for Asian authors, uh, there is very uh, little that is known about their distribution and population all across Asia. Very few studies and conservation program focusing on authors in in Asia. And one of the uh, challenges with surveying uh, surveying uh, authors is that it's not reliable to uh, identify species from signs only. So the best method is really to use genetics, to rely on genetics. Um, so we know that there are at least two different species of otters occurring in Nakanamton. Uh, the Asian small cloud otter has been confirmed and we know there is at least one uh, more species, but it has never been identified. Uh, so last year we started this collaboration with the conservation uh, ec ecology program at King Mongkut University in Thailand to conduct the first ever otter specific uh, survey in, in, in Laos, and uh, which is based on uh, genetic genetics uh, derived from otter fecal samples uh, which are called sprains and so between last year and this year we collected 60 different samples and we were uh, and the samples were all sent to uh, the, the lab in uh, in thailand and we've been able to confirm uh, asian small cloud otter and a second species, the Eurasian otter, which was very exciting because the Eurasian otter was only, uh, had only been confirmed so far in Laos from a historical uh, record. So currently uh, we are working on publishing uh, these results and we really expect to expand this research to other sites uh, in, in Laos in collaboration with other institutions. So we've also been uh, conducting some wildlife monitoring program with camera track surveys. So in order to evaluate the impact of management intervention uh, at the national park level, we need to have a long-term and system systematic wildlife monitoring program. And for this, we are using camera traps. And this is to estimate trends in, uh, in animal populations um, over, over time and across the landscapes. Um, and with the method we are using, we, um, we are estimating uh, uh, index of abundance of our indicator species. Uh, this project is of course conducted in collaboration with the, the management authority of the national park, uh, but also for all the technical side, we are we've been collaborating uh, for a few years now with the Leibniz Institute for Zoo and Wildlife Research uh, in Germany. Uh, they have been developing uh, some 
protocols and some methods, including field protocols, data management protocols, and analysis methods uh, uh, for camera trap surveys, systematic camera trap surveys for long-term monitoring uh, at, lar uh, at large uh, scale levels. So uh, right from the beginning, uh, we were able to um, be involved in the development of the strategy for the national park. And this, um, this, the strategy uh, includes uh, zoning of and prioritization of um, in, inside the national park. And this includes three different biodiversity priority zones where most of the patrol eff effort is, um, is focused. And also this is where uh, our camera trap is, um, is implemented. So, so far we've been able to, con to, uh, to complete uh, two rounds of, um, of surveys uh, 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 um, covering these three zones. So the, the first time in 2008, 2009, so we've covered the three zones and uh, then this year we've uh, also covered one more time uh, the, the, the three zones. Um, so I'm still uh, going through the whole uh, database and in the next couple of uh, weeks and next couple of months I, I will be uh, working on um, preparing reports and also working with uh, uh, our partner IZW to uh, produce some uh, more um, detailed analysis on occupancy models and um, uh, preparing some predictive distribution maps for our indicator species and eventually we'll be working on publications as well. So just um, a few um, um, samples of some photos that uh, we got uh, with primates. Uh, this is the large antler munchak I was mentioning before that uh, was, is endemic to the Annamite Mountains and that was only discovered in 1994. Uh, this is the female with the young and this is the, the male. This is a different species of munchak. So we've got actually three or at least three species of munjaks uh, in, uh, in Nakanamton. And this one uh, is also endemic to the Annamite Mountains. Uh, again, same species. Uh, this is uh, the hog badger, a species of small, of small carnivore, which is very sensitive uh, to hunting pressure. So this is one of our uh, indicator species. And this is uh, very good news that we still have um, a good population of uh, hog badger. This is the Austin civet, again, a small carnivore species endemic to the Annamite Mountains. And uh, as well, it is uh, one of our indicator species and same for uh, pangolins. We've also uh, have uh, two different species of bears, the Asian uh, black bear and the uh, uh, sun bear, which you can see here. Um, we've also started to set up some camera traps uh, up in the tree, so in the canopy. Uh, there was, uh, so it's been just uh, so far experimental. Uh, so in 2018, uh, we've um, uh, collaborated with professional tree climbers who came to Laos to our site to train our team to uh, um, safely uh, climb trees uh, with all the gears and since 2018 we've been monitoring a couple of camera traps and we've been able to uh, get some amazing uh, photos that are quite uh, unique. Uh, so far we haven't been using uh, these, uh, this technique for um, a research uh, but really just using the photos that we get for uh, awareness and communication campaigns. Uh, it's very impactful and, and powerful. So I'll show you now um, also a 
a sample of the photos we got. Uh, this is um, the small tooth palms event. This is a magpie, uh, brown hornbill. Uh, this is Bengal slow lorries, so we get them quite often actually. Um, and actually, I, I, would, I would love to have a project on uh, slow lorries because we, we don't have any at the moment. And a beautiful uh, red shangduk. We got some really, really beautiful uh, photos from, uh, from the dukes. And different species of uh, macaques. So this is a restless macaque and some pigtail macaques and some Assamese macaques. And very nice photos of gibbons as well. Um, there, the, in, in, in our site, they're very difficult to observe. So it was actually very nice to see that we can get very nice uh, photos uh, from our camera traps of gibbon families. Yeah, and these are uh, my two guys that were trained uh, to climb trees and they are actually amazing climbers and they absolutely love it. So it's, it's, it was also a great experience for them. Um, and of course, I'm always looking for expanding our research. There is, uh, like I said, it's very, it has been very little explored. So there is so much uh, we, we have to research and discover still. And especially uh, focusing on the Anamite Mountains and the uh, endemic species and indicator species um, in the region. And also, I really want to expand uh, all our research project to different sites uh, uh, across the Anamite in Laos in collaboration with partner organizations. Um, okay, so for our conservation awareness uh, project, so we've been uh, focusing actually mostly on publishing some educative materials uh, because this is really lacking in, in the country. So there is almost um, no books or uh, other resources to, to raise awareness about the biodiversity uh, in, in, in Laos. So we've been collaborating with the writers and illustrators uh, to produce uh, different books and uh, other uh, materials. So the first one was uh, Wonders of the Anamites, which was published in four different uh, editions, bilingual ed editions. The second one um, in Lao English is a fiction story about the Sao La. Then last year we uh, published this one uh, about the pangolin, also in English and, and Lao. And uh, this year we just uh, published uh, this one. It's a poster brochure. Uh, so again, we're in collaboration with a, a very talented um, um, graphic designer and an illustrator uh, based in Laos. Um, so this one is uh, to raise awareness about the risk to human health in consuming uh, wildlife. So of course I uh, came uh, to this, the, 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 the idea and the concept of developing this resource during at the beginning of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So, so far this year, we've uh, actually been able to distribute over 5,000 copies of all these uh, different materials uh, combined uh, to schools and also to partner uh, organizations such as the WWF, the IUCN, the WCS, and other uh, organizations um, working in, in Laos. Okay, uh, so we also have some anti-poaching uh, patrols uh, in the field. Uh, so we have, we've had six teams for a couple of years now that uh, Association Anulak is uh, supporting. That's uh, uh, 36 uh, villagers um, from the local communities. 
uh, they conduct monthly patrols about 15 days per month and they target one of the three biodiversity priority zones um, and we work uh, for this project in close collaboration with the wildlife um, uh, sorry the law enforcement uh, team of the national park and uh, its team of uh, advisors um, <clears throat> So this is, uh, this is just uh, quickly to show the, the overall uh, law enforcement strategy of the National Park. And just to uh, show you that this is uh, the, the, the anti-poaching patrols is one of the interventions of the overall uh, strategy. And our teams are fully integrated into the law enforcement strategy uh, of the National Park and they are actually uh, managed by the National Park uh, law enforcement team themselves. Uh, yeah, so our, our six teams are included into the forest rangers that you um, can see here. Um, they are using uh, the smart software for monitoring of the, of the data. Um, here, so this is just to show you the, the the zone where our teams are focusing. Uh, so this is just to show you the, the, uh, the track log of our team and the coverage of our team for last year. And just to show you uh, overall, all the teams, including uh, uh, the team that we are supporting, uh, all the coverage of the, the patrols across the national park. So it's really uh, intensive uh, work. Um, last year, we also started a new project uh, on community, local community resilience. Um, so the so we've we've only launched uh, in November last year, and uh, the overall aim of this project is to support the local communities in implementing uh, alternative livelihood project, and we are focusing on natural resources and specifically on non-timber forest products, and this is to reduce the reliance uh, and unsustainable use of the local communities on the natural resources in the national park. Uh, we work with a technical partner for this project, uh, which is uh, uh, called CIRAD. Uh, this is a French um, research institute um, working on uh, development. Uh, and in Laos, they've been implementing uh, this uh, approach called the Capacity Development for Agricultural Innovation Systems, which is an approach that has been piloting uh, been piloted um, in different countries across the, the world and including Laos. Uh, so uh, about our project uh, specifically, so this is really a bottom up approach. Uh, so we've so far we've uh, started to uh, collect some background information about the natural resources use and knowledge uh, from the local communities. And we've implemented um, a series of uh, community consultation uh, workshops, including some role play games to understand the local context and some potential um, uh, project, livelihood project we, we could develop with the local communities. We've also facilitated some follow up village level meetings uh, for the communities themselves to come up and propose some project they would like to develop on. So it's really a bottom up approach. We, we don't uh, suggest some project to them, but they suggest some project they would like to develop and uh, need the support, our support to follow them into the develop, de uh, development and implementation of these projects. Uh, so we have facilitated some village action plans uh, in pilot villages and now uh, we will move on to the next steps which is to uh, provide some support and training to the local communities to implement the uh, action plans that they have uh, been developing. Uh, 
which will be which will include some uh, training on natural resource management community the setup of community uh, cooperatives uh, marketing studies business plans uh, business management study tours etc uh, just like uh, 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 some photos to show you uh, some interviews with and workshops that we've uh, implemented in the local communities. Um, this is some role play games to really engage the local communities to come up with their own ideas of projects they want to develop. Uh, so it's very interactive and it's, uh, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, so more workshop and also some pre-marketing uh, studies to see the dem demands in uh, some uh, local product that uh, they could uh, work on and develop more. And this is uh, uh, just to show you uh, how it looks like. Uh, this is a, a village action plan that we will uh, support the community to, to, to work on. Yeah, so uh, capacity building, uh, this is not a, a program uh, in itself, but just to, to, to uh, tell you that all our different programs include uh, capacity building because we train Lao people and we engage um, uh, the Lao community in all the different projects we are working on. Yeah, so I'm coming to the end of this presentation. I hope it was not too long. Uh, so I would like to thank you all for uh, listening. And I would really like to take this opportunity to thank uh, the team at the Masters, the MIT in Climate Conservation, uh, really helped me a lot to uh, become um, who I am now and to do uh, what I'm doing now. I've learned so much during my master's and my, my PhD program. So thank you so much. And I would like to thank all our current um, donors uh, and all our project partners who have, uh, I have mentioned uh, during this, uh, this presentation. Um, I invite you to visit our website to learn more, uh, conservationlaos.com, and of course you can uh, contact me uh, anytime on, on um, um, sending me an email. Uh, yeah, so I'm not sure how we will work with question questions, but uh, of course you can. Your yeah, you you are free and welcome to send me some emails or uh, I guess uh, on the uh, Facebook page of the masters, uh, if you post your question, I can also reply so that everyone will, uh, will benefit from the answer. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much again. And I will try to put back my video quickly to say bye. Yeah. <laughs> Still very bad quality, but anyway, I would just like to say bye. Thank you. Okay, stop recording.